a good Monday morning, folks. Hope you're taking that little time to share a cup with us this morning. Um, it's, it's one of those mornings when we have a big show planned for you. Um, do do? I'm all dressed up. You really are. <laughs> Bill Jackson is alongside me <laughs> and I'm all dressed up today because I'm going to do one of the interviews that I've always wanted to do. Right. Let's put some context on it very quickly because we don't want to waste any time. Um, last season, our first season, at the end of it, I asked Joel, you know, if there was uh, if there were two people he absolutely needed to have his dream interviews inside of a cup of joe, who would they be? And he said, Basio Pandey, who I'm still desperately trying to get. So if anybody out there can contact him for me, that'd be great. Uncle Buzz. <laughs> as well as Maxwell Richards, George Maxwell Richards, former president of Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago. And this morning, we are so honored that he's on set with us, ready and raring to go to share a cup with Joel. Right. So just before we get ahead of ourselves, and, I, and I'm looking forward to that eagerly, um, Abiyo Jackson, can you give us an injury report, please? An injury report? On your, on, on your, because I, I'm um, seeing that you have taken off the brace on your knee, and, we, and I hear my tone is changing. Yes, it has. Yes? I, um, I decided that it was time. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get your medical certificate? When, did you, when were you medically certified? It's in the mail. It's in the mail. What, what's the status of your knee? Um, the status of my knee is that I'm not letting it prevent me from doing what I need to do. That's honestly the status of my knee. You know? <laughs> Listen to me, I am in a show right now in rehearsal with people like Penelope Spencer and Cecilia Salazar and Deborah Booker Mason and Nikki Crosby and I can't be limping around in a knee brace. They are forces of nature. <laughs> I can't be half a force yeah, yeah. with half a knee. No, no, no. So no. you're pushing through. Yes, I'm pushing through. So that's that's honestly as as um it's pretty much as honest a report as I can give. All right, all right. Yeah. Be careful. I shall. Yeah. I promise. All right. Okay. All right. Tell us what's coming up inside our cup today. Brought to you with the kind compliments of Kiss Sandwichology. There we have it. Like we said, we share a cup with none other than former president of Trinidad and Tobago, fourth former president of Trinidad and Tobago, George Maxwell Richards, Professor George Maxwell Richards. Then we uh, move swiftly into our financial fix with Republic Bank. Yes. And, uh, Shetley Branch mm. is here with us. Yes, he's here to give us that, all the financial 411s that we need. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, then scooch on into Cut for a Cause with a really um, interesting organization uh, talking about tourism. Yes, they are Trinidad and Tobago Hotel, Restaurant and Tourism Organization. We have the uh, president, Mr. Andrew Welch, who's here with, us. Here with us. And uh, we're going to chat with him, Tourism and TNT. So we're talking to a president, talking finances, mm -hmm. and we're talking tourism. tourism. And then we have our spoken word spotlight. Nice. Yes? Nice, nice, Great. nice, nice. Have you done the ice bucket challenge yet? No, I think it's ridiculous. Can we sit here? Cheers to that. <laughs> We'll discuss the ice bucket challenge at another time, another date. Um, let's take a short break and focus on what we have inside our cup today. And it's not on the ice bucket challenge. Please, Lord, no. <laughs> Please, Lord, no. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is a cup of juice. Stay with us on this wonderful Monday morning. Did a chemical engineer become the president of Trinidad and Tobago? Well, that's a very good question, and I can't provide you with an answer. <laughs> <laughs> looks, looks are deceiving. It's only now we start believing that statement. Now we had to spend the rest of his life in treatment, feeling temporary, consequences, permanent. What does he do now? Does he make it public? Put it on. Make some Trini favorites any day with Rani flatbread. You give some tomatoes a roast, cook in oil and seasoning five minutes at most. Give Rani a light toast, fill with choker, and be an epic host. Mmm, now that's a Rani good idea. One morning, Peter walked out to find every flower that he never stopped to notice. Every sunrise that he never watched 
every football match he forgot to play with his son and arrived at the cafe to find every conversation he never had with his father. And it was only then that Peter finally decided to wake up. Wake up to life. Nescafe. Nestle. Good food, good life. We're the one who's always there to help you all up Systems that work for you as you live life each day. We're the one who makes it easier to We give personal attention, so make us your selection. All right, welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. And I hope you're going to share a cup with us this morning on Cup of Joe because I'm about to share a cup with uh, a very special individual, one of the iconic individuals here in Trent Tobago. He is a chemical engineer by qualification, former principal of the University of the West Indies and the fourth president of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm speaking of Professor George Maxwell Richards. I'm about to share a cup with him this morning. Good morning, Mr. Richards. Good morning, Joe. Let me first of all express my appreciation to you for inviting me to share a few moments with you. Uh, I regard you as one of my favorite uh, TV personalities and journalists. I'm very glad to be here. You're making me blush uh, too early in the interview. <laughs> Thank you very much for the kind words. Um, you're one of my favorite people, without a doubt. And, and I just wanted to clear up what I said at the top. Um, because once a president, always a president in TNT. Is that how it works? No, it does not work that way. Uh, I think there are certain presidential duties. And I think one has to respect the fact that a successor is in place and one does not wish to crowd the issue for him and let him have his free run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course we're in touch from time to time. Yes. So no, 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 no presidential favors. That is now a thing of the past in That's, terms of that is yeah, or, or, that is all that goes with the president. That's right. No longer applies. That, that is correct. You, you, what are you doing with your time now? I mean, you must be bored stiff. No, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with your time? Well, I think I had indicated to you before that I've been involved with a number of universities mm -hmm. abroad. Right. Uh, Harriet Watt University which has favored me with an honorary degree. Mm -hmm. uh, the University of Cambridge, Pembroke College, where I'm an honorary fellow. Right. Uh, Sheffield University. Uh, and perhaps even more significantly, the Institution of Chemical Engineers, where I have served and have served as a role model uh, for them, mm -hmm. and uh, they have invited me on several occasions to speak at major functions. For mm -hmm. example, I address the uh, World Congress in Chemical Engineering as a lead uh, plenary speaker a few years ago. Right. A couple of years ago, I went to New Zealand uh, where I gave an address a plenary address to the uh, Australian and New Zealand group of chemical engineers called ACIMA. Right. Uh, so you, you've, you've gone back to your roots, so to I, speak. In a sense, I've gone back gone to my back roots. To your roots. Can, I, can I get some of you to drink? No, no, that's fine, except you, water, perhaps. Water? water? Yes. Let me get a glass of water. Uh, for the president. I, I, I just wanted to, so you've gone back to your roots, and, and I wanted to get from you how did a chemical engineer become the president of Trinidad Tobago? Well, that's a very good question, and I can't provide you with an answer. <laughs> <laughs> that journey must have been an interesting one. No, uh, in fact, I spent 
over half of my lifetime mm -hmm. in academia, 31 sure. years to be exact. Right. And my major concern at the time, of course, as you would realize, was education. Yes. Uh, it may well be that the Electoral College uh, was concerned about having a non-lawyer on board, just for the feel of things. Right, to see how it would work. I see how it would work. Uh, yes. Uh, I was, of course, re-elected in 19... Uh, uh, 1908. Mm -hmm. So I've served ten, uh, 10 years in that capacity. Uh, but my focus has always been on education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I may say, whether by luck or because of uh, using the bully pulpit, successive governments have in fact helped us mm -hmm. or, he in, or helped the country really by devoting resources to education. So that when I got into office, what we call the tertiary enrollment rate, mm -hmm. which is the percentage of people uh, over the age group, say 16 to 22, mm -hmm. who uh, ac are accessing uh, tertiary education, education. Mm -hmm. was only about 10%. Mm. Today, that figure is over 50. Right. That, that's mainly responsible because of the GATE program, you think? Well, the GATE has helped. Yeah. But I think uh, I mentioned to you that a former central bank governor, mm -hmm. uh, Ewart Williams, has perhaps... Well, he really has indicated that the GATE program, as well as subsidies on, for example, fuel, are perhaps no longer sustainable at a cost of something like $3.4 billion a year. Mm -hmm. So the time has clearly come where we have to modify the program. Uh, perhaps we may need to do a proper manpower to s survey to see where the shortfalls are. Right. I mean, we can't continue to be importing uh, medical practitioners from Cuba and the Philippines. We ought to be producing these ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are the real needs of the country? Mm -hmm. And this is what I think we should sure look thing. at. Now, Professor George Maxwell Richards has been much more than about academia. Your, your involvement in the carnival and, and this country's culture has been very, very out there. It is very public. Tell me about your involvement in, in the culture and your love for the culture. Well, I think one of the involvements that I have had, and this is goes, step goes back for 25 years, mm -hmm. was a view that we had that students many of the students, and these are pre-gate days, yes. were disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And we thought it appropriate to find some means of providing them with bursaries. So we came up with the idea, my wife and I, yes. to hold a carnival fete. Now, this would be an all-inclusive, high-premium fet. Yes. Best of drink, best of food, in an excellent ambiance, which is what UWI provided. Good music. And so we started this, and it was highly successful from the onset. Yeah. And we were able to generate... Uh, the kind of income which could help us in financing uh, these students. Now, after about 10 years, I left the university. And I was persuaded by some friends to continue with this effort. So, uh, we held this FET and called well, there's several names, Friends to the Max, Max is the yeah, latest yeah. one. <laughs> uh, 
at various places like Carrick, as it was in those days, uh, down at the uh, Pier 1, also at Pier 2, really, Mobs 2, what was formerly yes, Mobs yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think, again, they were successful. But here, I think, let me make it abundantly clear that we designed this thing to, as a means to pri prov allow us to provide uh, some resources right. to, to our favorite charities. Right, right. That was the main aim. That was that the main was, aim. That was the main aim. Yeah. Um, when we come back, I want to take a short break. Yeah. When we come back, we talk a little bit about your involvement in the carnival and, of course, much, much more here with President Maxwell Richards, mm -hmm. uh, Professor George Maxwell Richards, yeah. sharing a cup with me this morning. Yeah. We take yeah. a short break here on a couple of They are best friends. They share everything. Experiences, moments, and adventures. They are always together. Protect them with Clem One Plus from Nestle. It's the only growing up milk with Prebio One to help protect them from gastrointestinal diseases. Your instinct is to love and protect him. Clem will do the same. Nestle, good food, good life. Why settle for a one note cereal? Get more with Honey Bunches of Oats. Four nutritious grains come together for more taste, more texture, more healthy satisfaction. Have a bowl of happy. All right, now we're back here sharing a cup this morning with uh, Professor George Maxwell, which is former president of TNT. And uh, Mr. Richards, in your reign as president, you never changed uh, who you are. Um, you were much, very much involved in the culture of the country. Um, and I think there were critics that would come out and say that was very unpresidential. Well, it how did you well respond to that? How, how did you respond to that? How do you respond no, to I that? No, I don't take them seriously, clearly. Mm -hmm. This is the culture of our people. Mm -hmm. This is in the nature of our people. In fact, we've been associated with mass ever since the days of Garib. Uh, and when you say we, you're talking... My you wife and, and I. You, yours, yeah. We played with bands such as Bliss, uh, Yuma, that's an acronym for young, upwardly, <laughs> mobile adults, <laughs> none of which I am. And yourself and Mrs. Richards were very much up, up front and center. <laughs> and indeed, last year, we went on to San Fernando. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we enjoy it and we will continue yeah. as long as we have a couple of legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that did not affect your presidential reign whatsoever? As no, as no, as no, 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 no. You know, whatever you do, there will, of course, always be critics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can't take these too seriously. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the role of the president yes. in this country right now is ceremonial. Uh, it, 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 well, we call it perhaps pseudo-ceremonial pseudo because he does have some other things to do which mm -hmm. are formal and require. Break it, down for the I, man, break it down for the man on the street. What, yeah. what, what does the president do? What's the president's function in Trent Tobago? Well, the president has several functions. He, first of all, requires to, is required to make a number of appointments. Yes. Some of them, like independent senators, in a sole uh, capacity. Others, like members of commissions and boards, mm -hmm. after consultation with the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. But of course, he has the final say in matters like this, and eventually gets the blame. <laughs> we have been involved with a number of, what shall we call them, as patrons with at least 50 organizations. And these are organizations which are doing worthwhile work in the community 
unheralded and unsung, but these people are really working hard in the community with little by way of resources. And I think uh, we have enjoyed ourselves being in association with them mm -hmm. and as perhaps assisting in some small way with the work which they have done. The president is involved in a whole range of other activities uh, like appointments of members and as I say, commissions, mm -hmm. appointments of uh, our representatives abroad, high commissioners and ambassadors. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he is the, in a sense, the keeper of the records of the country. Right. And there are many other issues which he has to deal with. Is he, is he expected or she is expected to have an independent political mind? Uh, of course, the president has to be completely impartial in our setting. I think you probably will know uh, that my father actually uh, was the first attorney general of this country. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was many years ago. But I have always maintained a non-partisan line. Mm -hmm. In fact, this has worked to the detriments of my friends, for example, who I refuse absolutely to bring on board in positions of uh, trust. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Ooh, I, I, I can't help but wonder, during your time as president, and, and as you look ahead now, post your, your era, yeah. um, the impact that you thought you would have made on society and, 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 and the state of society as we move forward, post your era. Well, if it is one thing that I think I've done, and as I mentioned this before, is to push for education. Yeah. Because the most valuable asset that a country like ours can have is its pool of highly trained men and women. And because it is the work and understanding of these people that economic and social development is obtained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is issue number one. I have been concerned also, and I must tell you that, with the energy sector. Mm -hmm. The energy sector, well, put it this way, I'm not sanguine about it in the long term. I think we've got to recognize, for example, that we are a very small producer of energy. The reserves which we have represent less than one third of 1% of the world's reserves. And while we have great expectations for increasing such reserves by further exploration, nothing is guaranteed in life. Mm -hmm. and it's important to note that we are the largest single exporter of methanol and ammonia from a single site. We were the country which developed the first truly gas-based economy. And this was a model mm -hmm. that has been used by other countries. Now, what has happened in the interim? We used to send about 85% of our requirement of liquefied natural gas to the United States. 
This is no longer the case. Because of the business of shale gas, I think you will know that there's a between the North Dakota and Montana area, there's a shale gas deposit uh, which has, over the course of five years, increased its production 60-fold so that in due course, this is a back and for uh, shale back as they call it, in due course, the United States will be a net exporter of energy mm. to our detriment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the time really has come when we need to walk the talk and move into diversification. Mm -hmm. How soon you see this happening though? Well, I mean, the projections are that oil prices will drop mm -hmm. over the next 10 years mm -hmm. uh, by some 20 or 30 percent. Uh, and it seems to me that we have to get our business on track within 10 years. Within 10 years. Within 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I say, one cannot be sanguine about the uh, energy situation in this country. Yeah. Um, post presidential era what do you miss most or do, or do you not miss it at all or you, you you moved on seamlessly i have moved on seamlessly uh, as i was mentioning to you i have been doing some work for the institution of chemical engineers yeah so you haven't missed you haven't missed the presidential no 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 and i've also been doing some work for the american institute right uh, which i'm not a member of but which uh, continue to invite me. Right, right. So you've kept yourself busy. I've kept myself you've busy. You've kept yourself busy. Yeah. Uh, who, who has to keep up with who? You have to keep up with Mrs. Jean Ram John Richards, or she has to keep up with you? No, I have to keep up with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps you ticking? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a pleasure speaking with you. I, I, I know you wanted to... to, to just send out some, some thanks to a couple of organizations. I'll offer you that opportunity now. Well, I'd like to express my appreciation to, first of all, the independent senators that we have mm -hmm. appointed in my sole discretion. I wish to express my appreciation to all the members of boards and commissions which we have appointed in my time because these people face intense public scrutiny and theirs is really the work of patriots mm -hmm. of quality yeah. So I want to express my appreciation to them. And as I say, I also uh, express my appreciation to others who have supported us on the way, like the uh, uh, groups which have offered us patronage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. I, I, I say Mr. President because in my mind, you're president for life. <laughs> <laughs> this is not our esteemed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Not Professor George Maxwell Richards. Our pleasure. And it's really been a pleasure sharing a cup with you this morning. Uh, he's passing through a cup of Joe, uh, thanking him so much, uh, Professor George Maxwell Richards. We move on uh, right here on a cup of Joe. Stay with us, go. Through. Want to know what you can do with Rani flatbread? You give steak a slice, lay pieces on Rani, sprinkle spice, add grated cheese and sweet peppers with a dice, and finish by rolling it up real nice. Mmm, now that's a Rani good idea. It's really one bank you can depend on. One bank that beats the way.
Yes, it's Monday morning. It's that time where we start the work week. We're thinking serious and we're getting into what we are now branded the financial fix. Good to see our fine folks at Republic Bank. Today, I have Shedley Branch back with me and we are talking mortgages. Yes? Yes. That's a frightening word sometimes for young couples, mm -hmm. for anybody who is interested in getting involved in owning a piece of property. That, that could be a daunting word or a daunting task. It could be. It could be. Um, I think, though, with the help of our mortgage specialists, our, mm -hmm. our sales officers and whatnot who could talk you through, it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of information out there that you can arm yourself with. Um, so that when you go, when you finally take that step, it doesn't have to be the, the, the nightmare that in some cases that it has, that in some cases it is. I, one of the things, and I'm taking my mind back to when I was getting involved in the entire process, um, it, 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 you think I need to have plenty money <laughs> to even venture into this process. And for that, many people don't even venture. Right. Um, right, right. Is, is that a fact? Do you need to have... Oh, how, 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 how much money do you need to start well, with? Plenty of money is relative. Mm -hmm. um, the minimum amount that you would need to have is your, is your down payment, yes. which minimum is 10%, 10% of the cost of the so property. So that's based on the cost of the property. Yes. It's also why there's going to be some other costs um, involved in the mortgage, right. your closing costs, um, costs involved in getting insurance, yeah. legal fees that you want to make sure and have put aside as well. So if it is that 10% is the amount of the down payment, you probably want to save another 5 or another, even another 10% to make sure you cover all these other things that you may want to, um, that you would have to spend. Yeah. If, if someone comes to you off the cuff and, and tells you, I, I want, I think I want to apply for a mortgage, but I'm not sure I'll, I'll qualify. I'm not sure the bank will qualify me. Um, the, the first step for them is to do what? Well, Exactly that, to mm -hmm. go in and become qualified, mm -hmm. right? We have a process where in which we will assess you based on your current financial status at the time, mm -hmm. and we will give you a certificate stating clearly what amount of a mortgage you, you can qualify for. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that if your financial circumstances change, or even if your life stage has changed, that you may want to go back and do it again. There's no, there's no limitation in terms of the number of assessments that you can do. Right. Right? Because you may qualify based on your being single, no chick, no child at this right. point in time. Then a couple months later, you know, you're now married. Yeah. Um, double income. Double income. Right. So obviously the amount will change. Right. You've changed jobs and whatnot. So obviously your amount will change. So you will come back in, we assess you again, and then you have a basis on which you can either go out, purchase your property, or if it is that you're building, you have an amount that you know you can work with. So, so all right, and, and building, Shedley, is also another kettle of fish. Huh? I oh, yes. mean, yeah. Do we get into that here? Or, we get into a little, uh, a, little bit, bit, a little bit here. Because buying a ready-made property is one thing, yes. but there are some other nuances involved in actually if you have a piece of land and you're looking to build a property. Yeah, well, I think actually we could probably have a whole other segment. That's a whole other segment. On, fair enough, on fair, enough. But, fair enough. But inside here, I'm giving you just a few tips yes. and as it relates to, to construction as well. All right, well, then let's, let's, let's head to the tips because I think the tips okay. are, are very important, very meaty for, for folks to understand what is required. So your first tip, uh, your first financial fix tip, Shedley, is, is begin planning for home ownership early. Yes, well, well, yes. What, when you say early, how early is early? Well, first of all, you would, you would find that financial planning and planning is going to be a recurring theme in some of my tips, yeah. in some of the tips that we're, we're advising here. Early is early in your working career. Okay. Right? Now, um, banks, Republic Bank, provide financing up to the age of retirement. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you begin, the longer you will have to stretch those payments out right. and, be, and become it be more be more affordable if you're able to do so. Right. right? So I normally suggest a hey, if it is that you're starting your you know your career 28, 29, that's a good age to start to plan so that by th by 33, 34 you're able to begin. To begin 
to begin the whole process. The whole the, process, yeah, right. Whether so you're buying four or... Four or five years of planning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. saving. That's saving, right. yeah, yes. yeah, 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 that's right. And that, uh, that is the most important part of the planning process. Yeah, but... Acquiring, it, the, acquiring the down payment, acquiring the... Fund. Acquiring a down payment, as well as making that decision whether you're going to buy or build. You can make that decision from so early on? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, the price of properties mm -hmm. these days, you would be, you would, with your assessment, you will quickly be able to determine well, okay, I'm in that range. I can buy a property value 1.5 million. I can value I buy a property worth two million dollars. Mm -hmm. But it may it may set your 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 sights differently based on how much you qualify for. Right. So case in point, let's say for example you are qualified and it's for 1.2 million dollars, right? You might be like, listen, that is not going to buy what I would like, right? Based on where I want to be, uh, where I would like to live and whatnot. So you may say decide that you would like to construct. You decide, I'm going to purchase land, mm -hmm. get a nice piece of land around $600,000 or so or, or less, mm -hmm. and then you have the difference in which to construct. You can even tell based on average cost of construction, the kind of size property that you want to build as well. Okay, okay. And, and, and the bank also offers that sort of advice in terms of if it is wiser probably based on circumstances of the particular individual. Mm. But to build, to build or to, or to well, buy. we don't we don't you direct you in no. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, the that assessment is probably the best time for you to make up your mind whether to go that direction, whether you're going to buy put um, purchase a property straight off, you're right. going to buy a piece of land, and and then build and whatnot. And again, that that still also speaks in terms of starting early. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying land, you have a little more time to get your plans drawn right. and, and whatnot. Kind of As we say, construction is a a whole, a whole not a kettle oh, we deal with that, we deal yes. with that, we deal with that. All right, tip two, uh, get pre-assessed and know how much you qualify for. Right. And so that's, that's what we, we sort of interlapped there. Um, right. How much you qualify for, whether it's one million, two million, three million. Right. Uh, right. So just uh, uh, as it says this, you know how much you qualify for. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to be look. It, it will direct your, 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 yeah. your eyes, so to speak. Zone the target. Zone, Zone the target. in on the yeah. target. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing is... Is more heart uh, heart wrenching than looking and finding something that you really really like, and just to find out that you're not you're not qualified right. for that. So it doesn't make sense you going and looking for properties worth three million, yeah. and you can only afford one point five yeah. million. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so as I said, you can if you're buying, that's the direction you're going to head. If you're building, it also gives you an idea how much you can build, right. what size property you can build. Case in point, uh, let's say. Um, a few years ago, when I was building, uh, average cost per square foot mm -hmm. was approximately three hundred and fifty dollars. Was a good uh, three hundred and fifty dollars per square foot. Right. Was a good avenue size to to to, um, to use. Um, at two thousand square feet, that's seven hundred thousand dollars, right? So your property, if you if you're looking at a property land cost at three hundred. Uh, four hundred thousand dollars there. Okay, well you know you're in that one point two that I talked about. If you you're qualified around, um, for that amount there, so it gives you an idea how much, what size property to build. Because, I mean, cost you can have cost involved in um, drawing your plans and whatnot. So again, you don't want to draw plans for your dream house. You draw uh, draw plans for a three thousand square feet house with pool and and carport and all kind of thing like that. Only to find out later that. You can't, you can't build, you can't qualify for the mortgage to build that. Yeah, makes right? sense. Yeah, makes sense. All right. The third tip is get a property evaluation report before signing a sale agreement. Right. Break that down first quickly. Okay. Now, we are proper, um, when you enter, when you uh, uh, decide to purchase, you have to enter into a sale agreement. Entering a formal sale agreement requires that you put out ten percent. You're, you're buying a home from who you're buying it from. Yeah. yeah so developer, mm -hmm, whatnot, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's, it's natural. Sometimes yeah. you find there's a deal out there and whatnot, and you're maybe anxious yeah. that you want to, to lock in the deal quickly, and, and that's understandable. However, banks finance on the basis of the value of the property. So if you enter into sale agreement first. Then get your valuation and find out that the valuation is less than the property cost. So you're buying at a million dollars and the property is valued 900,000. Let's just say for argument's sake. Right? We are going to be financing 
on the basis of the $900,000, the lower of the two. So we finance 90%, right? So that's $810,000, right? If you've entered into the sale agreement already and have put out already, I mean, already put out 100,000, you now still have to find another 90,000 to meet all requirements. Oh. If you can't complete this, uh, the sale within 90 days, the vendor, uh, it's within his legal right to fourth, um, to, to seize the down payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and putting itself an expense. Exactly. Yeah, For yeah, most of yeah. us, most of us can't afford to give up that hundred thousand dollars. I, so. I want to leave all the next tip um, that I'm seeing here because it's really for building. Right. And I want us to deal with building on another, on another, on another, on another show. Sure. All no right. Problem. Because because I said building um, is is an entirely different scenario altogether. No problem. Um, so we, we, we'll stay with those three tips. Okay. Um, and, and any other details, as I said, you feel free. Uh, you can go into any one of the Republic Bank, bank branches um, and, and get information. Shed, I want to thank you so much for dropping by once again on our Financial Fix. Every Monday, you can get it right here, your Financial Fix on a cup of joe, brought to you courtesy of fine folks at Republic Bank. We're taking a short break. We're coming right back. There's really one bank they can depend on. One bank that leads the way. Technology and systems separate us from the rest. Yeah. Republic gives only the best to you. We get personal attention, so explain for your inspection. Want to know what you can do with Rani flatbread? You give steak a slice, lay pieces on Rani, sprinkle spice, add grated cheese and sweet peppers with a dice, and finish by rolling it up real nice. Mmm, now that's a Rani good idea. All right, we're swinging into what we call Cup for a Cause here on Cup of Joe, and... Uh, Inside Cup for a Cause uh, this morning, we have uh, a tourism-focused organization. It's the Trent Tobago Hotel, and Restaurant, and Tourism Association. So that's hotels, restaurant, and tourism, all lumped in one, all under one association. I have the president, newly appointed president with me, Andrew Welsh. Uh, good morning, Mr. Welsh. Thanks for being here with us. Good morning, Joel, and thanks for inviting me yes, to it, have a cup with Joe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting that we just had uh, former president, Maxwell Richards, on, and he was talking a little bit about diversification. Mm -hmm. Tourism in Trinidad still being taken for granted? Still being taken for granted, but one of the greatest opportunities for diversification. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in the business for 17 years, so I'm relatively young in it. Mm -hmm. But um, since coming into the business, and as a matter of fact, that's what got me into the business, the fact that I, I believe that Trinidad and Tobago has one of the best tourism products, not just in the Caribbean, one of the best in the world. But, but, but do we believe that, though, as a, as a society, as a, as a nation? I, I, I don't get the impression that we believe that. And, and, and it's not our focus. It's not our yeah. main objective here in Trinidad and Tobago, mainly because of what Professor Matt Richards was speaking about, the fact that we're energy-based and oil-based. Yeah. It's never been one of our, our main focus of attention. Well, that's quite true. One, we don't believe it. One, in, in many instances, we don't know it. Right. And um, as a result we are missing out on great opportunities. Um, we are, as Professor Richards would have said, we, have, we, we, we produce less than 3% of 1%, some fantastically small figure. Mm -hmm. um, you have the United Arab Emirates, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Dubai, yeah. who are big in energy. But what they have done, they have started channeling their energy money into tourism, building all kind of crazy structures. Mm -hmm. You could say um, in the old days, we would have considered these places as just um, deserts mm -hmm. on a beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now these deserts on the beach are oases mm -hmm. with all kind of um, offerings. Mm -hmm. 
So they uh, used their energy money yes. and pumped it into tourism. Yes. Where are we in terms of that, that, that transition? Far from that. Far from we, that. We haven't gotten the spark yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, due to the work some of our members are doing in the background, the statistics, the information they're putting forward, showing the government how much revenue um, tourism brings. And they have not, we don't capture everything. Mm -hmm. We're mainly going with the revenue in the hotels. But if you look at all the spin-offs that tourism um, generates income to, we have a, we have a gold mine, an untouched gold mine. Is your organization working directly under or in association with the Ministry of Tourism? Um, it's a private sector organization. Also, se separate and apart from Totally it. separate and apart, but we do come together mm -hmm. to ensure things happen. Right, right. right? right. Um, we do come together. There must be collaboration between pr private and public mm -hmm. sector mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you want any industry to go. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the private sector, which is your organization that is, is running, why? Um, this, in other words, the, the rule, what I'm asking specifically, is the rule of your organization does not fall under the Ministry of Tourism, TITCO, TDC, and all its variations. No, no. totally independent. Mm -hmm. But as I said, we work together. We, there are projects that we would do together. In mm -hmm. the past, there was the um, Caribbean culinary event that takes place in Puerto Rico, which Trinidad used to win almost every year mm -hmm. because we could cook, mm -hmm. right? Um, and um, you would have had collaboration with TDC and the THRT carrying out culinary teams. Um, again, to show my product development vision, mm -hmm. we sh it shouldn't just be about us carrying out the teams. And the, the association has started moving forward with that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I would like to see is that turning into people coming to Trinidad. Thousands of people must want to come to Trinidad because they know of our culinary team mm -hmm. and they know of our culinary prowess in Trinidad and Tobago. How is that going to happen? How are you going to um, make that happen? Well, the, the, the way to make it happen is, I'll, I'll give you an example. Andrew Zimmon from the Travel Channel, Bizarre Foods, mm -hmm. he was here some years ago. Actually, I was the host taking him around. Right. And um, that was a program that went viral. Yeah. yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, the Travel Channel showed it over 100 probably over 150 times right. between 2007 and now. That's free advertising. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we have not capitalized on yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Um, to capitalize on things like that, you have follow-ups. For instance, they said Richard's Bacon Shark, best fish sandwich you ever had. Yeah. Now, he said that on TV. I met another TV producer who he recommended Trinidad to. When she came down... Um, we were going out, she told me, Andrew didn't see everything on TV because he, he told her that it was one of the top five things he's ever put in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Now, we have those kind of accolades going yeah. about stuff in Trinidad and Tobago. But we don't care about those things. We, do we? we don't care. So, <laughs> so what, what the um, association, the, the direction we are driving now is advocacy for our members, mm -hmm. benefits for our members, mm -hmm but going in the direction more of product development and ensuring that experiences are created and those that are there already are done properly mm -hmm. so we could really attract people. All right, looking forward to see how that develops. Um, I, I want to quickly talk. I know there's a big tourism week uh, coming up in yeah. September. <laughs> um, just, just tell me, I know there's a big gala that I think yes. your organization is planning. Tell me, tell me what we can expect. All right, well, and, and when is, when, when I could when talk is more on the gala than on, on tourism week. Yeah, because it's a gala award ceremony. Yes, I think it gala is, yeah. award mm -hmm. ceremony. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that the association is embarking on such a project. I right. think this would be the biggest project that the associ association has ever done. Right. And it will all be about celebrating the contributors to tourism in Trinidad and Tobago. Which is hotels, The hoteliers, the, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the staff. Right. Um, you would be celebrating the best support staff. Right. So it's celebrating the people who have been making it happen, right. the organizations who have been making it happen, 
And of course, we're getting much support from the Ministry of Tourism. Right. Um, and other private sector companies are now coming on board. Unfortunately, because it was it hasn't been published yet, I, I wouldn't be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But we're getting um, private sector, other private sector support right. um, to it happens, make it happen. It happens on the twentieth, I believe it is. Twentieth of September. Yes. It takes place down at the Hyatt, right. and um, as I said, it will. Be gala. It will be gala. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they're expensing me. I have to go get a tuxedo. And yeah. <laughs> get a, get a bow tie. And, and look, yes, yeah, I don't even have on a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but nice so we're looking forward to it because um, what we're hoping to do here on a cup of joe, so I know some of the country's top chefs will be showing off their fine cuisine and, and their skills. So we're hoping that we can uh, include some of them and showcase some of the yeah. fine things that they will do over the next couple of weeks here as we build up to that big gala ceremony as you all, as suppose show some sort of appreciation for the hard-working people yep. in the industry. All right, great. I'm looking forward to what will happen in terms of tourism in this country. It's obviously needed as, as, uh, as some sort of diversification needs to take place in TNT. Well, Joel, I can tell you that um, that is what my focus yes, is. That's right and um, I am even taking it to the point where, well, we right now do mm -hmm. tours in places like Laventil and Belmont. Right. Right. Um, these are communities that are rich, rich in culture, rich in history. But the negative stigmas, mm -hmm. which in some instances are sensationalized, are hampering what can happen in communities like that and how tourism could touch communities like right, that. Right. Um, fortunately, right now, one of the arms of the association, the Tour Operators Association, is now running a New York Country Tour program, which is receiving great, great um, patronage right. by local people. Right. And I think that is the start where we will start appreciating what we have. And by extension, everybody else will. Will too. I, I, I'm looking forward to the connection. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Andrew Wells dropping by inside Cup for a Cause uh, as uh, the, the tourism sector uh, looks to build and, 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 and re-energize itself here in TNT. Looking forward to that gala awards uh, coming up later in the month. Stay with us here on A Cup of Joe. We continue after this. I'm sure you recognize him, but you may not know me. I'm Mr. Peanut's stunt double. I used to go by Mr. Peanut Butter, but somebody thought I was infringing on his trademark. So now I have to go by Doug. Peanut Butter Doug. Roll it! Action! Cut! Action! Amazing stuff. You paying attention over there? That's called acting. That's what separates the real actors. I'm okay. Introducing Planters Peanut Butter. Naturally remarkable. Hey, thanks for staying with us, folks. So this is one of my favorite parts of the show where we close things off. And we had such a serious show today. I know. Ah, uh, yeah, it was, it was... But in a good way. It was, no, it yeah, was, it wasn't yeah. heavy. It, I, and I know that interview with uh, Professor Maxwell Richards is one that you've had a hankering for yes, for a while. Yeah. You know? I feel like I need to speak with Magendo. though. I know. Yeah. He's very measured in so much, how he speaks and what he says. And so, and so much he wanted to say, I mm -hmm, think. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to do a double take a double next take. season. Take two. Take two. Take two. Fair. Take two. <laughs> so we are chatted with Professor Maxwell Richards. We had um, the gentleman, Mr. Welch, from the Tourism Association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had our financial fix with Republic Bank. And now we have uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> the first star inside of the spoken word spotlight, Shauna Lucien. The lovely Sean Lucien. She's back. 
<laughs> and uh, she's so tiny. She really is. <laughs> but like I said, the last time, don't let the size fool you. Right. I think right, she proved right. that the last time. <laughs> so we don't know what she has in store. So I'm ready you to be actually surprised. You look like you don't know what she has in store for I the really first don't. time. I yes, really but I know when you know what is in store. And you don't. Really Your do. eyes sold you out there. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's Stay do yourself. this. The name of this piece is One Day at a Time. A body to put in a magazine, skin soft and smooth like margarine, a smile. A smile that would make you go crazy, long curly hair, suits in a frame perfectly, that body. Hmm. Hips don't lie like Shakira. Too bad I couldn't say the same about her persona. Murder, she wrote pretty face and bad character. She said she was a virgin. No man rode in that car. But it's a pity. He wanted to be her first, her last, her only. She said she had no games like Sarani. But he, he didn't recognize her play. And she wasn't true to what she said. Because he didn't get to hit it first like Ray J. Because... She wasn't no virgin at all. And she get more hit than cock ball. And it's only after he bats his ball and that crease he starts a ball. With them symptoms confirmed by the doctor's call. But it was too late. His blood was already contaminated. Ed regretting he should have wait. Ed investigate. Ed because he was educated. Ed. And he knew that he knew better. And intercourse with a partner is intercourse with every passenger that rode in that car. Now he asking himself the why and the why and the why's when he should have be wise and condemnize, he should have be wise and see past the lies, he should have be wise and realize the truth. The truth was lying right before his eyes, it wasn't no surprise. Looks, looks are deceiving, it's only now he start believing that statement. Now he had to spend the rest of his life in treatment, feeling temporary consequences. Permanent. What does he do now? Does he make it public? Put it out there, deal with the discrimination, scorn, stigma, way and tear? Or does he keep it a secret? And hope nobody find out about it. Thinking about it, she should be charged with first degree murder, manslaughter, outsmarting, killing young male prayer, better pray. She doesn't come to a neighborhood near you. What does he do now? How does he keep a pure smile, a pure heart when it's pumping dirty blood? What does he do now? How does he stay positive? When he is positive, he's thinking there's no way he's going to live. But brother man, there's a way. Just take it one day, one day at a time. Thank you. Yes, very moving stuff. So much of a real issue. Yes. It is. Um, so much of a real issue, HIV, AIDS. Is. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, it's almost what two decades, I think, or yes. probably a little more than that. And that uh, we've been dealing with with the disease and the perception in the beginning. Um, I mean, let's just put it out there. In the beginning, when um, HIV was first supposedly discovered, there were all sorts of stigmas and, and stereotypes and yeah. theories mm -hmm. attached to it. Oh, it's a man-made disease. Mm -hmm. It's only one. It only affects a certain Almost demographic. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but. Um, thanks to education and thanks uh, through different mediums, especially mm -hmm. like pieces like these. You know, uh, Chanel is a young person who can now reach out mm -hmm. to young people and let them know what's what. Yeah, you I, understand? Yeah. I think even more than young people. I, mm -hmm. think, I think these pieces are so um, prophetic almost mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, this can hit a, a much wider society. Because mm -hmm. um, this, this disease affects one and all of you. It has yeah. no, no... I think um, the, the uh, bracket in terms of the statistics, it mostly affects... Females between the ages of 16 to 35. I yeah. think that's the, the bracket now. Yeah, so, yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 Little um, boys, little lady. But hello. Certainly a big, big, big person. Message. Yeah, yeah, big, big message. message yeah. So, yes. On that lovely, very powerful and very beautiful note. Yes. That's how we wrap up A Cup of Joe on this very marvelous uh, Monday. Thank you so much to the fabulous folks at Drink Lounge and Bistro, mm. as well as uh, Amanda, Faces of Belarus, for al always making us look gorgeous. And thank you to the folks at Branded for our Cup of Joe paraphernalia for Season 2. If you'd like to get into contact with us, this is where Joel Villafana takes it away. <laughs> you can follow <laughs> us on Facebook and on Twitter. It's a Cup of Joe TT. Uh, of course, you can drop us an email if you so desire, A Cup of Joe TT at gmail.com. Uh, we are also uploading our episodes now on our YouTube channel. If you missed us in the daytime, check us out anytime. Just uh, check out Villa Info a Production Studio on YouTube or just search Cup of Joe and you can pick up all our episodes on 
YouTube. If That's you miss us in the daytime, <laughs> check us out anytime. Yeah? Yeah. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you so much, Chanel, for dropping by. Ha, ha, ha. She, this is her last this time. This is her well. last time. So, oh, yes. It's, it's we like, wave her goodbye yeah. for the season. For the but season. who knows, we might see her again in a season to come. Yeah, the Spotlight series will continue. We are wrapping it up here on this Monday. Uh, good, nice, strong show today. We enjoyed uh, Professor Maxwell Richards at the top. It was one of my interviews that I always wanted to do. And as I said, I feel like I should do it a second time. Sure. I, need, I need a second shot at it uh, <laughs> to get more out of him. He had so much to say. He has so much to say. We are coming back on Wednesday, folks. Uh, join us uh, for a cup of joe. Whatever's inside your cup, just enjoy it.